All right, let me guess. You set up an aquarium a while back and everything looks good, but you're struggling to keep fish alive. You just want to have fish in the tank that look good and you don't have to replace every couple of weeks. Well, here is our list of the best, hardiest, most bulletproof fish. All right, let's get this one out of the way first. The common Placostomus might be the most bulletproof fish, not only on this list, but it might be the hardiest animal on the planet because it's literally swimming around with a suit of armor on. I've got two personal examples of just how hardy these fish are. First is when Lisa and I had our fish store, we came in one morning and found a common Pleco that had jumped out of one of our tanks and was on the floor dry as a bone and hard as a brick. I was in a hurry at the time, so I just, set him back in the tank. Don't worry, it, there wasn't any other fish in the tank. It was just for him. Well, 15 minutes later, I come back to the tank and he's swimming around like nothing happened. The second example is I went to a fish keeper friend of mine's house back in the mid nineties. And the first thing I did was go look at his tank and the water was down about halfway and everything was off. I asked him, Hey, what's going on with this? And he said, Oh, I just shut it down and Gave all the fish to a friend. I'm over it. I am not making this up when I tell you I went back like four months later. The tank was down to about two inches of water at this point. And when I walked up to it, I must have made a noise because there was something that fluttered across the tiny bit of water that was in there. What do you think it was? Yep. It was a common pleco that was in there the whole time with no food, no nothing, no maintenance, no nothing, just, just there. And it was fine. Obviously, I am in no way condoning either of these examples as something that you should do. I'm just using these as examples of just how hardy these fish are. But you know what I'm going to say. Don't buy a common Placostomus unless you have a minimum of a six foot tank. Yes, these fish are hardy, but they get absolutely huge. And they're not the worker fish you think they are. I agree with John that common placos are super hardy fish, but in my opinion, danios should be at the top of the list for super hardy fish. Danios are perfect because they're the most active fish I've ever seen in the hobby. These fish are everywhere and they never, ever, ever stop. I have never seen a danio sitting still. It doesn't matter what's going on. If you have danios, you're going to have a ton of energy in your tank. There's a lot of people that would recommend guppies or goldfish for brand new fish keepers, and they're not wrong. Those are great choices, but danios need to be in the conversation too. The reason they're great for beginners is because they can tolerate a lot of the mistakes new fish keepers tend to make, and they'll look cool and be super active at the same time. You might be thinking, yeah, but they're not as pretty as guppies, and that's certainly true, but there's still a bunch of varieties that have some awesome colors like the gold lines you're looking at now, the pearls and the celestial pearls. Danios don't need to be in a huge tank either. In fact, the celestial pearls can comfortably fit in a five gallon, but when you move up to the pearls and most other varieties, you're still gonna want at least 20 gallons. And the giants, 55. These fish can live in almost any water conditions. They don't need a heater. They're super active. They look cool. So what else needs to be said? Here's another perfect example of something that if you know anything about this channel, you knew it was coming, but I don't want to just tell you a story from my own personal experiences. I want to share with you a story that Dustin from Dustin's fish tanks told us when we saw him at Aquashella back in Daytona. Listen, Oscars are freaking awesome. <laughs> and since we're on an Oscar rant, I have seen these on the floor of a house on the carpet be picked up after being out all day at school and be dropped into a tank like a brick and hit the bottom, dried out, like done, Gatonk, and make a thud and sit there and one gill would move. Oh my gosh. And then, you know, and, and like, and like after like a week of sitting there half dead, Oscar was fine for like eight more years. Okay, like, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, incredible fish. 
And Dustin's not the only one with stories. I've got one of my own. Shocker, I know. This is actually multiple stories about the same fish. First is I had an Oscar that's been shown many times on this channel in old videos. I bought this fish back in 2010 and he was maybe three inches. About six months after I got him, we had him in a tank that was on a dresser pretty high up off the ground in my daughter's bedroom. Well, we were moving because Lisa and I were merging our households and I went to go get that fish out of the tank that the top of the tank was well over my head. The fish jumped out of that tank, went over my head and landed on the hardwood floors behind me. I immediately got him back in the water and he was a little stunned for a few minutes, but later on he was completely fine until like three years later when something else happened to him. We had him in a 150 gallon tank at the front of our store with a couple of very large red devils. He was a very large fish at this point too, and everything was perfectly fine until it wasn't. Those two red devils ripped that Oscar to shreds, and we thought for sure he was a goner. I don't have any footage of the damage they did to him, but be honest with you, if I did, I probably wouldn't be able to share it on YouTube. That's how bad it was. Well, we took him out of that tank. He was laying on the bottom of the tank. We stuck him in a 75 gallon tank and Lisa immediately jumped in and said, hey, you know what? Don't worry about it. I got this. She nursed that Oscar back to health and three or four months later, after all of that had happened, you wouldn't even know anything had happened. He was perfectly fine. Point is, Oscars are like Timex watches. They can take a licking and keep on ticking. Just make sure you do the right thing with them. You put them in something large. Put them in 125 gallons or larger. I know I preach about these fish all the time, but it's true. They are amazing fish and they deserve to be treated properly. Get them out of your stupid little 29 gallon tank. Put them in a 125 and they will reward you for years and years to come. They're the best. I'm guessing if you knew about this channel before you started watching this video, you were probably thinking bulletproof fish. Of course, John and Lisa are gonna be talking about Oscars and Betas. Well, you were right, but this will be the last one, I promise. There's a right way and a wrong way to keep a Beta. We do our best to give you direction on the correct way to do it, but the fact is, if you bought one before watching any of our videos, you probably still had success with them, no matter what you put them in. Betas are the fish you'll see in some housewife's Pinterest post of the way she decorated her fireplace mantle with a vase that has a cool plant coming out of it and a cute little fish in it. Or you see them as a centerpiece at weddings. Don't do that. I know it's your wedding day and it's all about you, but you don't have to be selfish and put a cute little life in a vase so that it looks pretty just for you. Just stick a flower in the vase. It's just as pretty. The reason why I bring these things up is because even though they shouldn't be treated like that, betas can still survive it. They're super resilient little fish that can thrive in a wide range of water parameters and they don't need a big tank. But don't get carried away. Give them at least five gallons. I don't care that Fluva makes a two gallon tank for betas and there's a bunch of little tanks at the fish store that look super cute and everything. Five gallons, please. All those products are simply money grabs. They know moms are gonna be walking around the pet store with their child that says, mommy, I want a fishy, and she buys them the teeny box with a pink lid and a beta just to shut them up. This happens every single day and I can't stop it. But again, betas are super hardy fish and can usually survive the abuse. Thrive? No, but they'll survive. Oh, and by the way, we've created a promo code just for this video you can use for 10% off at keepfishkeeping.com. Just go to the site and get your plants, fish food, live snails, or betas, and enter bulletproof in the box at the checkout, and you'll get 10% off your entire order. Seems like every fish I'm talking about on this list, I have personal experiences with their resilience. Hmm. 
It's almost like I did that on purpose. There's a couple huge reasons I have Cooley Loaches on this list, and no, it's not because there's an awesome pick of one in the thumbnail of my most watched video on my channel. It is a really nice thumbnail though. No, I have them on this list because they're freaking awesome little snake looking things, and I've had one survive an unthinkable scenario. I had a Cooley Loach in a 75 gallon tank with a sand substrate a long time ago. Lisa and I were getting ready to move and I didn't have any fish in the tank, so to get prepared for it, I just shut that tank down, drained it, and just left it until we moved. The tank sat in the basement for about a month till we moved, and then about three months after we moved before I was ready to set it up again. When it was time to set it up again, I put my hand down in it and started running my fingers through the sand just to break it up a little bit because it had pretty much dried completely out by that point. And wouldn't you know it, something went bloop, 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 across the bottom of the tank. Oh yeah. I forgot I had a coolie loach in there. This fish was buried in the substrate of this tank for four months with no food or anything and was still totally fine and lived for a couple of more years after I set that tank back up. If that's not an example of resilience, I'm not sure what is. Now look, don't be an idiot like me. The lesson learned here is don't just take your tank down and be done with it. Make sure absolutely every living thing that you have in there is out before you shut your tank down and leave it for four months. What fish is so hardy that a low life carny can stick a fish in a bowl and you just throw ping pong balls at it to win the fish? It's a goldfish, of course. Goldfish have been looked at as throwaway fish for as long as this hobby has been a thing. They're used as feeder fish and like I said, carnival games. And it's pretty sad, but once you get past all that, these really are some super hardy fish. I'm sure you've seen all the videos on TikTok and YouTube of people keeping them in bowls and tiny tanks and they're like, aww, look how happy and healthy they are. Well, the sad reality is they are. These fish can tolerate pretty much anything you throw at them. Goldfish can survive in a huge range of water parameters, and one of the things they're most known for is their tolerance for different temperatures. This is why they're the most common fish found in backyard ponds all over the world. For a great example of goldfish's resilience, you don't have to look any farther than the pond John and Micah from Easton Outdoors rescued fish from. The water in this pond was literally black and every time John put the net in it, it came up full of mud. There were four large koi and 24 goldfish in the mud and they showed no signs of sickness whatsoever. I can't imagine anything surviving conditions like that, but these fish were perfectly fine. I'm sure they weren't happy, but they were alive and breeding in that mess. All of those fish are now living happily in John's brand new pond. If you missed the series of videos John did about that pond, I'll put a card for it up in the corner. You should definitely check it out. That fish rescue was pretty dramatic. Anyway, goldfish can survive pretty much anything. It doesn't make it right. I certainly don't agree with it, but what are you gonna do? Rainbow sharks, a fish we really don't talk about a whole lot on this channel because we haven't had one in a while, but these are some super awesome little fish. And no, they're not sharks. Another personal story for you about these fish. I had one way back in 1993 with, you guessed it, an Oscar. It was back before I possessed a little thing I like to call common sense and still thought if fish grew up together, they'd be friends and wouldn't kill each other. <laughs> Give me a break. I was 19 years old and there was no internet. The funny thing is these fish did get along most of the time, but every once in a while, the Oscar would be like, all right, I've had enough of you. And he'd completely just start chasing the rainbow shark all over the tank, knocking over anything in his path. I'd look in the tank and it would look like a war zone and be like, hey, Where's the shark? And I'd find him hiding behind a rock, scared for his life. I'd put everything back, things would be fine for a while, and then boom, it would happen again. That poor rainbow shark was terrorized by the Oscar for like three years and he was completely fine. 
John, that's, that's a horrible story. Why wouldn't you move that shark to another tank? And why would you even tell that story? Well, like I said, I was young and dumb and I thought it was funny. I'm not proud of it. And as far as telling that story to hopefully millions of people on YouTube, well, if I've made a mistake and I feel like you can learn from it, I'm not afraid to share it. I'll look like an idiot so that you can be better than me. You're welcome. Guppies, oh, where do I start? Guppies are a great example of the perfect fish. They're nice and small, so they can fit in pretty much anything 10 gallons and larger. They're super pretty with all of their colors, and they're another one that can tolerate a wide range of parameters. And I'll give you one more thing about them that separates them from everything else on this list. They breed, they breed, and they breed like crazy. I got two female guppies from Diana Walstead earlier this year, and they had some pretty plump bellies to them. And she said they'd probably pop out some babies. Boy, have they popped out some babies. And they've had babies. <laughs> There's been so many babies from these fish that I'm struggling to figure out what to do with them all. I've got them in my 100 gallon tub with all my ram's horn snails. I've got them spread across like four 10 gallon tanks and they're still popping out. And the thing is, now the babies are having babies. It's insanity. And I probably have more tanks with them in it too. I just, I can't keep up with all of them. I guess the best way to describe this is Diana's male guppies have such powerful, um, you know, uh, so it just kind of sticks with them for months. Have I provided these fish with a super high-tech tank to facilitate this kind of spawning? Nope, not at all. When I got the females, I put them in a 10 gallon tank with some plants and some shrimp and I let them do their thing. And boy, did they. And that's the point. These fish can thrive in almost any condition and that's what makes them the number one fish in my opinion for new fish keepers, besides betas. So there you go. Now you know some fish that you can put in your aquarium and have great success in any conditions. And hey, do you wanna see three more? Click that join button down below, become a channel member where you're gonna get three bonus things every single week for every list video that we do. Don't forget, if you wanna support the channel, go to keepfishkeeping.com, enter bulletproof in the promo box at checkout, get 10% off everything you order. Lisa and I will pack it up and ship it to you same day, as long as you order it before 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See ya.